bariatric dysautonomias. Uh, this is where I do most of my research, uh, especially uh, in uh, Parkinson's disease, in uh, pure autonomic failure, and in multiple system atrophy. Uh, uh, all of these diseases are synucleinopathies. That means they all involve deposition of the protein alpha-synuclein. In the case of uh, Parkinson's and PAF, dementia with Lewy bodies, they're in neurons. In the case of multiple system atrophy, the synuclein deposition is in glial cells. These are non-neural uh, helper cells, which are actually the most prominent cell types in the brain. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I'm dealing with a patient who's referred for orthostatic hypotension, I think of four steps. The first is orthostatic hypotension is a persistent, consistent thing, if it's part of a disease. Persistent, consistent thing. Uh, uh, often, I would say most of the time, there's an identifiable cause, such as a drug. Uh, uh, there can also be a secondary cause, like uh, diabetes would be a very common one. Uh, uh, then I ask whether the orthostatic hypotension is neurogenic. And one way to tell if it's neurogenic remembers from the Valsalva maneuver. Remember that the progressive fall in blood pressure in phase two, the slow recovery of blood pressure in phase four. The for fourth step, uh, which is a little bit more researchy, uh, but I think is important clinically, is, is the, is the uh, orthostatic hypotension that's neurogenic associated with sympathetic denervation. Uh, in uh, Parkinson, oh, I think I have it here. Here, in uh, Parkinson disease with orthostatic hypotension, uh, this is a blood flow scan. You can see where the heart is, but uh, you don't see the heart at all on this sympathetic imaging scan. Very dramatic noradrenergic deficiency. In multiple system atrophy, in most cases, the innervation is normal. In pure autonomic failure, uh, you don't see the heart. It looks very much like in Parkinson's with orthostatic hypotension. Why is this important? It's important because uh, if a patient has denervation, then there's a phenomenon called denervation supersensitivity. Basically, the, re the receptors for norepinephrine are there in the heart, in blood vessel walls. They're looking for norepinephrine. They don't see it. So they become supersensitive. Nobody knows exactly what that means uh, in uh, molecular terms. Uh, but, that, but as a result, if they see anything that looks like norepinephrine, they're going to be res they're going to respond. Denervation supersensitivity, actually uh, referred to originally by Walter Cannon, uh, if not Claude Bernard in the 19th century. It's been known for a long time. The mechanism is completely unknown. I'm sure there's a Nobel Prize for anybody who finds out what the mechanism of denervation supersensitivity is. But you can exploit it in terms of treatment. So if you give an alpha adrenoceptor agonist such as mitodrine, or a norepinephrine precursor such as uh, droxydopa, marketed as Northera, uh, well, the, that, those receptors are, they're gonna love it. They see a lot of norepinephrine and they're gonna respond. Plus, these patients have baroreflex failure. So any increase in blood pressure is gonna be buffered. So in somebody who has a denervation, sympathetic noradrenergic denervation, the first-line treatment would be a norepinephrine, a norepinephrine receptor agonist, either a direct agonist or a, uh, or a norepinephrine precursor. And somebody like multiple, who has multiple system atrophy, let's say, eh, there, there probably would be some increase in blood pressure because they have barrel reflux failure, uh, but not as much as in uh, PAF or in Parkinson's with orthostatic hypotension. Uh, this is what a Lewy body actually looks like. In Parkinson's disease, there's, uh, the main damage is, uh, is in uh, um, the putamen. This thing that looks like a slug is the striatum. It's, and, it's the, the, and 
it has two parts, caudate and putamen. I think of <coughs> I think of a sad clown's eyes. And the, the eyes themselves are the the head of the caudate, and then the, the eye liner is the uh, putamen. And in Parkinson's disease, the main uh, damage is at the level of the putamen. Uh, so uh, with that background, now we can now we can look at uh, we look at the patient. Uh, you can see uh, here. This is what his uh, this is what his straight and looked like originally, and it was normal. Uh, two years later, two years later, there were two phenomena. First, this is what his putamen looked like. It looked a little bit chewed up. Uh, compared to baseline, uh, still within a normal range. But a second thing that happened was clinically, for the first time, he complained of visual hallucinations. Very strong finding uh, that would fit with incipient dementia with Lewy bodies. By two years later, now you can see his putamen is really messed up. Um, more on one side than the other, which is what happens in Parkinson's disease. So if, I'm sure if I were to show this to a, an expert in Parkinson's disease, this would be called, that would be called Parkinson's disease. Uh, PAF, pure autonomic failure, can evolve into either Parkinson's with orthostatic hypotension or dementia with Lewy bodies. PAF is a rare disease. Parkinson's with orthostatic hypotension is not rare. Dementia with Lewy bodies, I think it's underestimated how common it is. I think it's, uh, but certainly it's second to Alzheimer's disease in terms of geriatric, because of geriatric dementia. And you can see here that uh, PAF evolved into dementia with Lewy bodies. Uh, uh, your, the patient already had a loss of uh, sympathetic nerves in the heart. The fluoridopa PET scanning was normal but you can see that over the course of time, uh, it became uh, abnormal. And this is, what, this is the kind of pattern you see in, uh, in uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, and this patient died and did have uh, 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 evolution from PAF into uh, Parkinson's uh, with uh, orthostatic hypotension. This is a normal sympathetic ganglion uh, provided by uh, Risa uh, Isonaka. You see the tyrosine hydroxylase there in red and uh, cell nuclei in blue. And this is what was seen in sympathetic ganglion from that patient who evolved from PAF into dementia with Lewy bodies and orthostatic hypotension. And you see that there's hardly any, any uh, sympathetic nerves anymore. Instead, uh, there's been a replacement by alpha-synuclein. Alpha-synuclein is that major protein in Lewy bodies. So this provided, I think, a pathologic proof that uh, the patient did have uh, evolution from PAF into DLB. Uh, what about people with Parkinson's who don't have orthostatic hypotension? Well, you can get evolution there as well. And... Uh, 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 most, most, or about half of people with Parkinson's who don't have orthostatic hypotension already have a loss of sympathetic nerves in the heart. And a substantial minority have like a partial loss. And, and on occasion, especially in young patients with Parkinson's, uh, they can have normal innervation. This shows the progressive loss over time. Mm -hmm. These are what glial cytoplasmic inclusions look like, very different from Lewy bodies. Uh, and it's kind of ugly looking. There are spots of alpha-synuclein in glial cells. This, uh, now, now that you know the uh, organization of the, uh, of the autonomic nervous system, it's handy to think back about what you would see clinically in a patient with autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy. That's from a circulating inhibitor of the neuronal nicotinic receptor. And you can see that the neuronal nicotinic receptor is involved in every part, every part, even the, even the adrenal medulla. 
So uh, uh, autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy is one of the very rare situations that you can truly say is a cause of autonomic failure. The entire autonomic nervous system is shot. Thank you.